The Maginot Line was one of the strongest fortifications ever built, with underground railway stations, hospitals, and the ability to withstand nuclear hellfire. Yet today, the Maginot Line has become a metaphor for expansive efforts which offer only a false sense of security. How did this happen? To answer this, let's take a look at its history. France suffered the most damage from World War I. The war on the Western Front was fought primarily in French territories, and over a million French citizens lost their lives. In fact, several French soldiers mutinied after being sent on suicidal missions by their generals. Taking note of the significant number of casualties sustained by France in World War I, the French military leaders decided that taking a defensive stance in future wars would result in fewer casualties. Germany had nearly twice as many people as France. Germany had a higher percentage of young adult males able to fight in a war. And Germany had a much larger economy. This meant that invading Germany on its own would likely result in a defeat for France. This convinced many French leaders that defensive warfare was the only viable option. The French Minister of War, a man named André Maginot, believed that the peace with Germany was only temporary. After observing Germany's humiliation during the occupation of the Ruhr, he was convinced that a future war with Germany was brewing. Philippe Pétain, a former war hero and marshal of France, concluded that fortifications should be built along the border to deter a German offensive. Despite his ambitious claim, his defensive success during World War I's Battle of Verdun helped bolster his claim. Maginot, inspired by Pétain's defensive schemes, pleaded with a reluctant French government to approve funding for a large and extensive fortification project. The line was meant to stall an invasion for up to three weeks. This was the time necessary to mobilize the French army, and then it would serve as a base to repel the attack. Maginot preached several justifications for building the line, including the prevention of massive bloodshed, taking a non-aggressive approach to defense, and creating job opportunities to rebuild France's economy following the damage of the war. After years of passionate discourse with government and party leaders, Maginot was finally able to convince the French legislature to fund the development of the border defense. In 1930, the Chamber of Deputies approved 2.9 billion francs, about 173 billion euro in today's money, to be spent on building the line, although that cost would double by 1940. Construction of the Maginot Line began in 1929, with the experiences of World War I significantly influencing its design. When Maginot passed away in 1932, the defensive work was named the Maginot Line. It was built along the French-German border, from Switzerland all the way to Belgium. It maintained a front away from significant cities in order to deter German occupation and prevent damage resulting from battles. For this reason, the Maginot Line was designed to be very advanced for its time. It included underground structures complete with hospitals, ventilation systems, and trains. It is now understood that many forts were even able to withstand the force of a nuclear bomb. while the forts were also able to take multiple direct hits from German artillery. The amount of firepower in the Maginot Line varied at different locations. Designers placed most of the larger fortresses on the northeast frontier to protect the area of the Moselle Valley, an area with a large population and abundant resources, and thus a likely target for a German offensive. The line consisted of over 500 separate buildings, including around 100 immense fortresses, called ouvrages, separated by a distance of about 15 kilometers, and hundreds of smaller forts about a kilometer apart. There were also additional lines of defenses, such as observation posts and minefields. Once the Maginot Line had reached a point of near completion, the French government publicized the existence of the Maginot Line 
in an attempt to discourage a German assault. But, ironically, this helped the Germans prepare a plan to simply go around it. While at the same time, it gave the French public a false sense of security. In 1936, Belgium declared itself a neutral country, ending its previous alliance with France. Damn Belgians always wanting to be independent. This would prove fatal years later, when the Germans were able to bypass the Maginot Line and take Paris. Nevertheless, France still prepared by installing troops near the Belgian border. But, despite this build-up, France was still depending heavily on the Maginot Line. The German invasion of France had one army attack the Maginot Line as a diversion, while two other armies flanked. The attack on the Maginot Line would cut off the defences from the rest of France, essentially rendering them useless. Meanwhile, the other German armies cut through the dense Ardennes forests, which were previously seen as impenetrable. Philippe Petain's grave miscalculation that the Ardennes would not need to be fortified as part of the Maginot Line allowed over a million German troops to easily break through the forest and defeat the ill-equipped French forces in the area. France anticipated that it would take the Germans at least 15 days to traverse the forests. In reality, it took them just two. Once German forces were clear of the line, they faced little opposition in their path to Paris, as most of France's mobile forces were in Belgium. And so, France fell on June 25th, 1940. So what exactly happened? Who, or what, hammered the final nail in France's coffin? The line itself was not a failure. German forces failed to capture a single major fortification until the signing of the armistice. And the Italian invasion was effectively halted until France's surrender. After seizing control of the line, the Germans rearmed the fortification in preparation for the Allied forces' invasion in 1944. The German army used many of the Maginot Line's weapons and construction techniques in building the Atlantic Wall. The Maginot Line was designed based on the First World War, and therefore failed to predict the changes in warfare during the ensuing 20 years. France's preoccupation with building fortifications prevented them from developing new weapons and allying with other nations. Historians have harshly criticized both the development of the Maginot Line and the execution of France's defensive plan, calling it a foolish misdirection of energy. In fact, France was warned about the flaw in that plan as early as 1927, but went ahead with it anyway. The Maginot Line was an ambitious project, requiring endless hours of dedicated effort. But it probably wasn't the best use of France's resources. After the Second World War, France developed its own nuclear bomb. By having nuclear weapons to deter attacks, it no longer needed the Maginot Line to deter attacks. And when France withdrew from the military component of NATO, much of the line was abandoned. Parts of it were sold off and were turned into wine cellars museums, and even a disco. And currently, only one of the fortifications is in use, by the French Air Force, and the rest has been left to decay. If you liked this video, then please leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you have any questions, I will try to answer all serious questions in the comments. And if you want to vote on the next, next video topic, then you can vote in the poll in the top right of this screen. This was Avery from History Scope. Thank you for watching. And as a last item, I want to thank the people who let me draw them for this video. A few weeks ago, I asked you guys on social media if you wanted me to draw you, and eight people sent me a message on Discord or sent me an email with that picture. What you're seeing on screen right now are these eight people. They will, of course, remain anonymous. But if you don't want to be anonymous, then feel free to make yourselves known in the comment section below. For those who see this and now want their faces turned into cartoons as well, I am sorry, but the invitation has ended. Uh, you see, I wanted to test if people were actually interested in this or not, as well as seeing if people liked how I would draw them. Uh, the reason for this is that I was thinking of putting it up as a Patreon reward.
The responses were overwhelmingly positive, so I will put this up as a Patreon reward once I finish setting up Patreon. So, once again, thank you for letting me draw you guys, thank you for being my test subjects, and to all my viewers, I wish you happy holidays and happy new year.